Today, we also had, also simultaneously, we also had this disaster. Look at that. Erupt right on the state line between Illinois and Iowa. This is just outside a town called Galena, Illinois. You see it there in northwest Illinois, very close to the state line into Dubuque, Iowa. This is another oil train that has derailed and gone up in, flail, in flames. The train derailed, at least some of the tanker cars uh, on this train derailed and caught fire. This was an entire train of oil cars. Now, some of the cars, as you can see here, exploded. We've been watching coverage of this oil train derailment and the flames shooting up into the sky and the smoke you can see burning for miles. We've been watching this footage today through the local NBC affiliate, KWQC, uh, which has sent out teams to cover it. We've also been uh, watching through the local paper, the coverage of the local paper, the Dubuque Telegraph Herald, which has been excellent. But honestly, uh, part of the problem in figuring out what's going on in this newest oil train disaster is that nobody can get all that close. Apparently, this derailment of this oil train happened at about 1.20 this afternoon. The tracks run right along the Mississippi River. The rail company says this train was all oil, 105 cars, 103 of which were carrying crude oil. We don't know much yet about the type of oil where it was coming from, where it was going to, or what kind of oil train tanker cars these were. The train derailed at about 1.20. Within 31 minutes, the local firefighters from Galena were at the site. They apparently had to go down a bike trail along the railroad tracks in order to get to this site. So they were there on site within a half an hour trying to put out the flames in these oil cars. But eventually, the firefighters had to pull back. By 3.20, the firefighters had pulled back and left the scene. Local fire department captain telling the Telegraph Herald that because of the intensity of the fire, the local firefighters had to make a tactical decision to leave and they have now decided that what they're going to do with this oil train derailment uh, is they're just going to let these cars burn themselves out. They don't have any other options. The local captain telling the, t the paper that the, the fire teams had to evacuate quickly once they realized that these flames were much more than they can handle. And they left. They, they left behind all the equipment that they had brought out there. The captain telling the local paper, quote, we left about $10,000 worth of equipment behind. Quote, we can replace equipment, not manpower. So again, this 100-car oil train derailed and caught fire just outside Galena, Illinois, near the state line with Iowa, right along the Mississippi River this afternoon. Uh, we do not know at this point exactly how many cars have derailed and exactly how many have caught fire. We also do not know when those fires are going to be out or what the plan is for putting them out. This is a national problem. As we saw in the last train derailment of an oil train in West Virginia, there are just not very many options for putting these fires out once these oil trains go up. People call them bomb trains for a reason. That oil train derailment a few weeks ago in West Virginia was left to burn for days. Now, as to what's going to happen tonight in, in northwest Illinois at the Iowa border, uh, let's go live to a local reporter to find out the latest in news. Joining us now is KWQC investigative reporter Mark Stevens. Mr. Stevens is out in Illinois right now, uh, as close as he can get. Mark, thanks very much for joining us. Appreciate having you here. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, the latest... Well, I the latest thing I've heard, let me just ask you, is that we heard that evacuations are underway in, in the local area tonight. Have you heard anything about that? Yes, there was uh, a one-mile evacuation that was put into effect. That affected about six homes around in that area. And we, we weren't sure. The, the public information officer at the time didn't know if any of those people were at home. So we don't know if they actually had to get out of there or if they just weren't allowed to go back home this evening. Um, and as far as where they went, uh, the, the PIO didn't know. We're still waiting. For some more information, they're actually going to have a press conference in about 20 minutes, uh, hopefully with plenty more information from the railroad as well. Mark, how close have you been able to get and what have you been able to see over the course of the day since the derailment happened? Well, the closest we were able to get was actually uh, on the Iowa side of the river. Um, where this is at is rather remote. Uh, it's about four miles south of Galena along the river, and there just aren't a whole lot of access roads down there. So from the Iowa side, we were directly across it. We couldn't see the tracks because there's a lot of islands, a lot of trees in the way that are in the river. It's part of the Upper Mississippi Wildlife Refuge. Mm. Um, but what we could see is at first we just saw the huge plume of black smoke, and we saw that actually 20 miles out. And then while we were there getting video at a farmhouse, uh, we did see uh, one of those big explosions that you saw in the West Virginia uh, uh, crash, uh, which was just an amazing video. We didn't expect to see anything like that. Uh, we knew that one car had been uh, on fire, and my sources were telling me that there it was at least another tank car that was on top of that tank car. And so when that we saw that explosion, we were guessing that that was the second tank car, although we don't know how many have actually caught fire. We were told do that we know, total had derailed. Sorry, Mark, do you know if there is uh, oil in the river or if there's risk that this could turn into a Mississippi River spill? 
That we're not sure of. Um, we did overhear some firefighters talking about some boom being placed. Uh, most likely that would be in the Galena River, which is rather close to this. Mm-hmm. Um, the river is iced over, um, so that could help. Uh, we actually had a train derailment uh, probably within the last couple of weeks that spilled a bunch of ethanol into the river. Again, with the ice on the river, that ethanol was actually able to stay on top of the ice and froze to it, and they were to recover most of that off of the ice, although some, in that case, did get into the river. KWQC investigative reporter Mark Stevens uh, doing yeoman's work today, trying to get close to the scene. Thank you so much for helping us understand, Mark. I appreciate your time. You're welcome. All right. So we're apparently swamped with the